In today's video, I'm going to show you all how to connect to Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Tesla's Bluetooth on your new hand shows display that is an instrument cluster for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Thanks for tuning in on today's episode of my Tesla series. My name is Shiva Sapkoda. If you're new here, I make mainly Tesla videos covering wide range of topics, anywhere from software updates to some crazy installation. My channel is all about helping people and being positive. If you like what you see today, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Let's get started with today's video. I have been getting a lot of requests to do this video to show you all how the Android Auto works and, and Apple CarPlay, how do you really connect? Is it a wired connection, wireless connection? Uh, and Hans also told me that they have been getting a lot of requests about this video. So I'm gonna make this video to show you all how to do all of that. Before I get started, I wanna let you know that um, I have an iPhone and the Android phone that we're gonna be doing the tutorial today. But unfortunately for the Android Auto, I couldn't figure out how to connect it wirelessly. I was able to only do it through a wired method where we connect to a charger and then the USB port in the handshow display and it works and I'll show you how to, but wirelessly I wasn't able to connect the Android phone. I was able to connect the iPhone to wireless Apple CarPlay, but not wireless Android Auto. Maybe this is a future feature through software update and I'll keep asking handshow about it and update you all on what they say, but so far, looks like it only works with wired Android Auto. Before we get started, I wanted to make it clear that Handshow's speaker does not play any music. It is only there for the navigation audio. So we have to connect the Handshow's screen to the Tesla so that anything that you play through Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or just through Handshow's screen is played through Tesla's speaker. And to do that, it is a fairly straight process, all you have to do is go to music, scroll down and tap on phone, connect to phone, and then start the search process. It will find a Tesla screen BT Bluetooth and just tap into that and it will start adding. And it will give you a code, but you don't have to worry about that. It automatically adds that and then now it becomes your Bluetooth and I would recommend selecting this as a priority device. Now for the Android Auto, just make sure that you have this app called Android Auto downloaded in your Android phone. This is very critical because it will not work. The Android Auto will not work without this app downloaded. After you have the app downloaded, just connect your USB-C or micro USB or whatever USB port that you use and make sure that the phone starts charging. And it won't automatically do anything. You have to go onto the CarPlay. So when you go there, it will, for the first time, it will ask you, Android Auto would like to, and it will ask you for a whole bunch of permissions about Bluetooth, just hit next, and that is all you gotta do. And then it just starts the Android Auto in your car, uh, in this display, and it pulls up with the navigation as a default, and then if you press on that white circle on the top, then all of your apps are pulled up, like Audible or your calendar, your messenger, your phones, it's as an SMS, and there's Waze, uh, Weather, there's a whole bunch of apps, and to get more apps, all you gotta do is add more apps to your Android phone, and it will just pop up on this display right here. On the left-hand side, there is that mic icon, which is the Google Assistant, and you can just ask Google, you know, okay, Google, pull up my calendar, and whatever you have in your calendar will show up. For this, there's no event, um, and you can use Google Assistant for any of your commands, and then if I press on the notification, it will show you all the notification, like your messages, your calls, right there. Um, this phone, I don't have anything. Couple of things I like about this display, uh, if I go onto the settings, if you don't have access to the Tesla's premium connectivity, now you get your traffic and your satellite map using your phone's LTE. So this is pretty neat. Uh, you can also get the guidance audio, you can mute, unmute, you can also just do traffic alerts only uh, for the guidance audio. There's also route options, uh, and th those options were really handy. Uh, I really liked it especially the part of that you can see satellite map without having to pay for Tesla's premium connectivity. And then there is more settings. If we go directly to the vehicle setting here, uh, you can look at toggle between the notification if you want to show message notification in the display or not. Uh, there is, you can mute the sound from the notification. 
you can also automatically resume the media so if you're playing something you can do that and then here if you can if you want to choose a different background for this display while well, you are in Android Auto like red here you can change between you know whatever background color you want uh, to personalize your display while you are using Android Auto. If you scroll down on the settings, there is this thing called Access on Phone Screen. What it does is if you tap that, now all those settings are can be controlled through your phone instead of having to control from this display. So if you don't want to touch the display or make those changes, you can do it from your phone by going to that setting icon. To connect your Apple CarPlay, what you need to go to is your Bluetooth setting on your iPhone and connect to this Bluetooth device called CAR on MT2712. In my case, your device might be, say, something different, but just make sure that that Bluetooth is connected. Now, all you have to do is go to the CAR setting and make sure that the Bluetooth is connected to your phone. Now, go back and then just press on CarPlay. And when you do that, the Z-Link app will come up and it says that the Apple CarPlay is connecting. Uh, just give it a little bit of time and then for the first time it will show that use Apple CarPlay with this device and if you press on use device then this Apple logo comes where it is trying to connect it is connecting it takes you know a little bit of time especially if you're doing this for the first time and right there it says Shiva's iPhone is connected and boom your CarPlay is ready to go. If you want your display to connect to your phone automatically the next time you enter your car, just go to this setting in Z-Link and type and toggle here where it says Auto Connect. And this way now, every time you walk into your car, it will automatically try to auto connect your Android Auto or your CarPlay so that it's ready to go every time you walk in. Keep in mind, this is kind of spotty right now. Uh, they are working on some updates to fix this, but sometimes it connects, sometimes it does not. It has been on and off, but I have had really good luck with this. So these are all the apps that you have that come with your phone or you have downloaded over time that are compatible with your CarPlay. Uh, you know, you have the phone, you have music, you have all of this. And if you want to quickly go back to the main menu without having to scroll down here, you can just press right here where it says kind of exit the door. So exit and then you are in the main screen. So if you go back to CarPlay again, right here uh, on the left side you've got your time, your signal, your battery for your phone, and then the recently used apps that you clicked on here. And then if I press right here, it kind of does a split screen with all the your navigation here. You can just press on home your music, and then whatever is in your calendar, it shows right here. You can click on each of these items individually to enlarge them. Now, uh, for a map, you can put the map in your phone, and it will mimic whatever is going on here. This, whatever address, and then do direction. It shows, and then if I just hit go. Starting route to 8155 Piney River Avenue. Now that... Proceed to East Oxford Avenue, then turn right. Now that volume that you heard is actually from this speaker here that is in the back. That is the only volume it plays. So, But if I play music right here, if I press play, the volume that you will hear is from the Tesla speaker because this does not play anything other than the navigation sound. If I go to settings, it lets me change the appearances, um, do not disturb while driving right here wallpaper so if you want to personalize it while you have your car play you know you can choose red and it will show you this is how it is gonna look so if I press set that is the wallpaper so if I go back to the apps now you have a red wallpaper so you can change some of those settings right here from the screen now if you want to rearrange some of this app or remove some of this app you can go to your car play right here, press on this, and then hit customize. So when you hit customize, it shows all these apps, and you can remove one of these apps. Let's say, let's remove the charge point app. If I remove it, right from here, it is gone. The charge point app is no longer in this uh, display here. 
that app is gone. And if I want to add that app back on, all I got to do is hit plus. And then now it is added to this where the charge point shows up right here. So that's pretty neat if you want to organize here. And there's no more apps, but if there are more apps that are compatible with CarPlay, it will automatically show up on your CarPlay screen. Now you can use your phone app to make calls uh, directly from this screen as well as your messages app. And if you long press this icon right here, Siri activate. Now you can use Siri to text or call uh, while you are driving. Go to your car setting, press on this general setting on the top and right here it says car speed display. So if you toggle that on and let's say we go back to our car play, that little floating speed will come up where you can just move this speed wherever. So whatever your driving speed is, it will show. And it's pretty neat that you can actually move and toggle this wherever you want. So I just want to clarify a couple of things here. Since the Tesla screen is now connected to Tesla screen Bluetooth here, that means it's connected to this device right here. I have Apple CarPlay in that hand show display. Now to clarify something, the alerts and everything that you hear on the car will still happen from the car. So if I press this right scroll wheel, just press the voice command activate. So that is still works. Nothing changes on that front. And if there is an alert, so if I press on my brakes, those alert is still come through, through the car's speaker. So no changes on that. What happens now is if I want to change the play the music so if I want to play the music I can just press on this left scroll wheel and it will now connect to the hand show display and play and if I want to uh, skip to the next track or, or go back I can just press right and left like what I would normally do with Tesla's screen to control the Tesla's screen's audio I can do it here so if I do that now there's a different song and go back and so on and if I press right here then it will start playing so just wanted to clarify that those controls still work uh, with all of this connected together all right little bit of a pro tip for you guys my phone is directly connected to the Tesla's Bluetooth so Tesla's Bluetooth is not connected to Hanshaw's display at this moment but as you can see I have pulled up the same song here and here that is because my phone offers dual Bluetooth. So if you have a phone that does that, where you can toggle between the, the Bluetooth, both of these are connected at the same time, but now I get to choose if I wanna play my music from Tesla's or if I wanna play my music from Handshow. So if I want to play my music from the Handshow's display, what I gotta do is I gotta make sure Tesla is connected to Handshow because we know that Handshow's display's speaker does not play any music. So if, you, if I want to play using this Hanshaw's display and then go over here, we can do that. But you can bypass all that and make a little bit of less audio lag by just directly playing from Tesla. So I can just select to play from Tesla. And now when I play the audio, it is playing actually directly from Tesla's speaker. My phone is connected to Tesla and then Tesla is playing the audio, but I still get to have this Apple CarPlay here but my phone is not playing the audio from here to there to there. It is playing directly from here to there, but I still get to have the Apple CarPlay here. So, and this is a functional Apple CarPlay. Everything works, it's just the audio is directly connected to Tesla instead of going and doing that loop here. There was also a question about Siri activation using this scroll wheel here while in Apple CarPlay. So I told you earlier, if you long press here, the Siri activates, right? What about the steering wheel knobs? So it does not just activate by press, long pressing here. That, that does not work. But what you can do is go to app specific. So right here, if we go to messages and press right here on the scroll wheel, the messages open. So if we select one of the messages and if I just click right again, that is when the Siri activates and you can text and, you know, call using the Siri through, through the scroll wheel control here.
There are some non-Bluetooth issues that Hanshou is trying to fix as a part of the next software update, uh, such as if you are already inside your house and you would still be connected to the Bluetooth in the Hanshou's device. So it wouldn't connect to the Wi-Fi automatically because the Wi-Fi wouldn't work with the Apple CarPlay. So the, all of those issues are non-issues. So they will try to figure that out as a part of the next update, as I said. That will do it for today's video. I wanted to show you how to connect an iPhone and an Android phone through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to this new display. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please uh, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Turn on the notification. Comment below with your ideas, thoughts, concerns, anything that you want to let me know. Please comment below. If you have any questions, suggestions, um, troubleshooting that you would like me to help you with, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to share my videos with friends and families. That really helps with YouTube's algorithm. More engagement means YouTube is going to show this video to more people. That means it's going to help me grow my channel and bring you lots and lots of cool and exciting technologies like this in the future. Stay safe and healthy. I'll see you soon in the next video. Namaste.